when I had an emergency housing situation, I went up to housing options. I came up with another woman with uh, two children. They turned us away. My best friend's uh, two children got very stressed out because we had very little money. So we basically had to go to a private hostel and we succeeded to pay one bed and then they said that they can't be in there because it has to be a mixed room. A child cannot sleep in a female room. And so we had all kinds of problems, even in paying hostel. So nobody was really, you know, able of helping the other one because they're not supposed to. My friend needed to do something for a child. She's not supposed to bring the child into job center. She's not supposed to bring the child in here and there and there. So it means she had to leave the child with me to be able to do something. It means I couldn't get the handout and I couldn't do the work. The hardest part is to look a young person or a hurt person in the eyes and say, I am trying, but on the other hand, the people who are supposed to do something are always looking with their eyes of, what did you do to come into this situation? They don't see the situation of people trying to struggle to get out of the situation. They're only looking to what did you do wrong. Well, I become um, homeless with personal reasons. And um, because you live on top of people, you need to live on their rules. And the day you become homeless, there's no way that anyone is going to access you to help you. And since you're not a priority, they're not going to listen to you. You don't have kids, or you don't have, I don't know, alcohol problem or drugs problem. Wherever you go, they say, like, you're not a priority. And they're kind of forcing you to get to do things you're not ready for. They're not listening to you. They don't want to listen. Um, you have to find a way to sleep. Like days that I go to the um, trying to find safe places, like police station or whatever, and they told me like there's no hotel or whatever. Don't come here. We're not a hotel. They tell you to leave. So we back outside again. In 1976, the UK ratified a Convenant on Economic and Social and Cultural Rights of the United States Nation. As a member, the UK must recognize the right of everyone to an adequate standard of living, including housing. The responsible UN committee interprets this to mean, among the other things, that the right to housing should be ensured to all persons, irrespective of income or access to economic resources. Access to shelter has to be a legal entitlement, not charity. To say water, sometimes you can go without it for a couple of months. Um, at one point, I was by like living under Waterloo Bridge with quite a few other people and we was lucky because there was a tap there. But having said that, how healthy is that water? I don't think that's like clean water. And many times I've gone to ask for like just a drink of water, it'd be a hot, hot day. And I don't know about other people, but because of my looks and like the way people judge people and things, I've always got to know. I know that there's like, like places that give out stuff like to homeless people and things, but that's mainly tea and coffee. And then places are not there all the time. They like maybe once a week or twice a week because of all cutbacks and things like that. So yeah, it's very hard. You have to pay for it. We have to pay for our water that comes from our taps. And it's not even real water. The real water is in the bottles that we've got to pay a million pounds for really. I've been like homeless about eight to nine years, on and off. Before, when I was become homeless, I don't know where to go, what to do. No, I don't know even anything about the day centers. And um, I know there was told I used to go to the, like McDonald's or 
the pubs and at that time it wasn't people asking anything. I just walk in and use it. And uh, once I was thirsty and I haven't got no water, the cup was a good couple hours. I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. Then uh, I did go to the toilet and I did drink a water in there, which one I wasn't be really comfortable, but I can't help myself. And I just have to drink and I just drink. I never woke to ask water. And I, I never beg. I can't even beg. I'm on the street. Somebody give me money, something. And uh, I always think and get a water first and get something eat. And even this morning, I wake up and I've been trying to be rolling my sleeping bag. And I pick up the cardboard and put it in the sides. And one person come in and he give me one pound. I said, thank you very much. This is my coffee in this early morning. In 1976, the UK ratified the Covenant on Economic and Social and Cultural Rights of the United Nations. As a member, the UK must recognise the right of everyone to inadequate standards of living. The responsible UN committee interprets this to mean, among other things, that homeless persons should have access to properly maintained water facility. Access to water must be a legal entitlement, not charity. I was actually a uh, street homeless for six years and uh, access to uh, get my clothes washed was nigh on impossible for two years until I got to uh, day centres. But even then, you went to a day centre, you could get a shower, but if you wasn't in the first 10, 15 people, the showers were cold by then. and you couldn't wash your clothes as well. It wasn't helping you, you was clean, but your clothes weren't. I've known people to actually uh, wash the clothes in the Thames. Me personally, I uh, went round to friends' houses to actually get my washing done. But at the end of the day, you don't want to be doing that all the time because it makes you feel shitty. When I become homeless, I had particularly 10 days without a shower. I didn't know what, what, what to do, and I have never experienced this homeless. I've never been on the street, and sadly I'm on the street. I need to fight to have a, a basic shower, which I thought it was freely given or I freely have. All I could do at that time is to wash my face and brush my teeth and try to look normal. And it was increasingly becoming very difficult. So someone says, oh, I guess you really need a shower one day in a shelter. I said, yes, I really need a shower. And they said, OK, there's places we go. Would you like to come with us? Then I went there in the morning, and I realised that there were possibly 30 people cleaning up for one single shower. I said to the guy, I'm sorry, but is that 30 people cleaning up for the shower? Then he said, yes, but this is the way. You have to key up, and if you want to shower, and this is the way. There were a few stories coming back in the night in a shelter where people did experience a struggle in the day, where they couldn't have anything. They literally possibly didn't have even money to pay a, a payable loss somewhere. And it, it, it gets you back to the reality of life and seeing people, just normal people like you, and they don't have that freely given facilities where they need to in their own way. So that was really tough. In 1976, the UK ratified the Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights of the United Nations. As a member, the UK must recognise the right of everyone to an adequate standard of living. The responsible UN committee interprets this to mean, among other things, that everyone has the right to access adequate and safe sanitation. Access to sanitation has to be a legal entitlement, not a charity. I've gone days without food. I used to think about food all the time. You know, become an obsession. 
And sometimes, I, when it was raining, I'd go into the A&E department at, at North Middlesex Hospital. If I spent a the night there, I was OK. The security guards would leave me alone. But I'd go to sleep thinking of my mum's cooking, believe it or not. And you'd wake up absolutely hungry. It, it did become an obsession. I think that made me tired more than anything else, believe it or not. I used to hunt around the dustbins at night, especially Sainsbury's, when they closed the big bins outside, because it's usually food they chuck away. But after a while, Sainsbury's got wise to things, people like me, and locked the bins, which was harder then to get food. I suppose there was an option of begging, but really I had some dignity left and I wasn't going to go down that, that road, and never have done. Uh, but there are some generous people about it who would come up and give you money, which I never turned down, and that helped a little bit. And that was it, and it wasn't until into my year that I met somebody who was on the streets and he suggested I come with him to a place called The Manor in London Bridge, which I'd never heard of, obviously. And that's when I found out there are quite a few handouts in the square mile. And then food was obviously a lot easier to come by. But until you actually come into the square mile, it's very hard in the boroughs, very hard. Sometimes when you sleep on the street, maybe you, you wake up in the morning and you find something, just to know, maybe you, a croissant or a cup of tea or something. But sometimes this is not, not happen and you have to do something by yourself. There is many associations to help the people, but something like maybe during the week, just two hours. Many, many times uh, I, I used to live in the street just with uh, breakfast because I go to the association to you know, open in the morning. It was like breakfast and lunch in the same time and for the rest of the day, nothing. You have nothing for the day after at nine o'clock and these plays are closed uh, in Sunday and in Saturday. So maybe the poor people don't have they are no hungry Saturday and Sunday, don't know. Anyway, there is some association for this kind of people, but I think it's not enough. In 1976, the UK ratified the Convent on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights of the United Nations. As a member, the UK must recognise the rights of everyone to an adequate standard of living, including food. The Food and Agriculture Organisation has said that states should consider, among other things, establishing and maintaining food safety nets to protect those who are unable to provide for themselves. Access to food has to be a legal entitlement, not charity. 